welcome to the next lecture. So, in this particular lecture, till now what we have seen is like, uh, uh, we have seen that how we can design a control unit. We have also seen both hardware and microprogram control unit design methods. So, in this lecture, we will be now looking into MIPS implementation. So, yeah, we have seen the general way of designing a control unit. We will be in this lecture, we will be specifically seeing that how in MIPS the data path is there, how in MIPS the instructions are actually getting executed with respect to MIPS instruction set. So, we have already dis discussed this in week 2 lectures, MIPS 32 instruction encoding. So, we have R type instruction, we have I type instruction and we have G type instruction. So, in R type instruction, we have an opcode field, we have 3 register field two source register, one destination register, we have shift amount value and this is the opcode extension function. In the I type that is immediate type instructions, we have opcode, two registers we are having and we have an 16 bit immediate value. Similarly, in J type instructions, we have an opcode and we have a immediate value of 26 bit. So, R s if present always occupies a bit 21 to 25. So, we can see that if R s it is present, it will always occupy this bit. If R t is present, it always occupies bit 16 to 20. Similarly, if R d it occupies from 11 to 15, this immediate field contains bits from 0 to 15, it is a 16 bit and immediate 32 bit it occupies 0 to 25, it can be extended to 2 more bit later we can see. So, the register operands as well as 16 bit and 26 bit immediate operand are retrieved and processed in case they are required later. So, as you see that this is the opcode, these are source res, uh, register and destination register, these are the immediate data. So, as we already know that this is how for different types of instruction these fields will have will contain these data. So, what we can do? We can retrieve these data well in advance. So, a simple implementation of MIPS here we can consider the integer instructions and data path of MIPS. So, the, what the basic idea goes here that the different instructions require different number of register operands and immediate data relative positions of the register encoding and immediate data are the same across instructions. So, by this what we mean that we use any instruction does not matter, it can be a J type, it can be I type, but we this is fixed that from this particular bit to this particular bit it will have this particular data, from this particular bit to this particular bit it will be this particular register, from this to this it will be another register. So, that is fixed. So, this information is known to us. Let us take a naive approach. In a naive approach what happens? After fetching and decoding an instruction, identify the exact register or immediate operand to use and handle them accordingly. So, in naive approach we are not doing anything, we are not fetching early all these things. What we are saying that we will fetch an instruction we will decode that instruction and then we will come to know that okay, this particular instruction performs this particular task. So, we can extract the register, 
we can if it is for an immediate operand we can extract the immediate operand. So, we are not doing something well in advance rather after decoding it we are starting to do all these things. The number of register fetches and immediate operand processing will vary from instructions to instruction. Obviously, the number of register fetches and the immediate operand processing will vary from instruction to instruction. We do not utilize the possible overlapping of operations to make the instruction execution faster. Like, we, if we are just fetching one by one by one, then we really cannot take the advantage of this uh, overlapped execution of instruction that is pipeline. So, we will not be able to take advantage of that. Rather, um, why? Because we are fetching each of these instruction one by one and then we are decoding, then we are getting uh, all the other immediate value or register value etcetera, etcetera. So, before instruction decoding is complete, fetch the register operands and immediate data in case they are required later. So, this is a better way. So, before the decoding is performed, we want to fetch, we already know that this particular bit will be a register, this particular bit will be an immediate data, this will be destination register, this will be source register. So, why not let us take those, let us, uh, let us fetch those and keep it in some proper place. If it is not required later, we will not use it. But at least if it is required, but it then it will be very easy for us to get the data, we do not have to fetch it again from that instruction. So, this is an assumption, an instruction can have up to two operands, uh, two source operands basically, one is add r1 comma r5 comma r10 and for load word r5 10 and uh, 100 R 6. So, there are 32 32 bit register instructions R 0 to R 31. We design the register bank in such a way that the two registers can be read simultaneously. That is, there are two read ports. We already have seen in multibus architecture that this might can happen that a particular register is having two read ports and one write port. We shall see later that the performance can be improved by adding a write port that is two read and one write are possible per cycle. So, this is the story altogether we have a register bank where we can read from two register and we can write into one register. So, read port 1, read port 2 and we have one right port. So, source register 1 will be 5 bits and the data will be 32 bit, source register uh, 2 will be 5 bits and the register data can be 32 bit and this is the destination register. Let us now come to a speculative approach, let us try to uh, speculate something. Here, we try to eliminate the time required to fetch the register operands and process the immediate data. So, as we said that when an instruction is decoded at the same time we fetch the register operands and also process the immediate data. That means, we have already seen that in MIPS architecture the immediate data is sign extended to make it 32 bit. So, all these things can be done once it is decoded. We really do not know at this point of time that whether it is it will require that immediate data or not, whether it will require the destination register, source register or not, but still let us do it. Possible because their locations in instruction word are fixed. Because of this fixed location, we are able to do this. If the operands are required, they are already available, no extra time will be required then, because we have already done this fetching of this register when it is decoded. And if the operands are not required, they are simply ignored, they are ignored if it is not required. So, no, I mean of course, 
as decoding is performed simultaneously we are doing that and if it is not required let it not required does not matter, but if it is required then it is very useful. Now, MIPS 32 instruction cycle which is divided into certain steps. So, what are the steps? Instruction fetch, instruction decode or we can say register fetch, execute where effective address calculation is also done. This is memory access, branch completion and write back to a register. We now show the generic micro instructions that are carried out in the various steps. In the instruction fetch, what happens? We know we fetch an instruction. As we have already seen for single bus architecture, here also it is pretty same, but it is specific to MIPS. Here the instruction pointed to by PC is fetched from memory and also the next value of PC is computed. So, every MIPS instruction is 32 bits that is 4 bytes. For a branch instruction, new value of the PC may be the target address. So, PC is not updated in this stage, new value is stored in a register called N. C. So, this is little bit different that we have done earlier. There what we are doing? In that case, we are updating the PC value and if there is a branch later at that point, we are doing Y in at certain stage and that Y in can be taken care and added with that particular offset to go to the branch location. There we were doing like this, but in this case in MIPS what they are doing actually they are updating the PC value, but not updating it in the PC register. They are adding the PC value and the new value is stored in another register. So, for this purpose they have kept another register called NPC, where the updated PC value is stored and not in the PC. So, we do mem of PC. So, the content of PC, uh, content of uh, memory location pointed by PC is brought into IR and PC is incremented by 4 and it is stored in NPC. Now, let us see what happens in instruction decode. The instruction already fetched in IR is now decoded. As we said that the opcode is a 6 bit field with an optional function of bits from 0 to 5. These are also stored first the source operand R s, second the source operand R t is also stored, 16 bit immediate data is also stored and 26 bit immediate data is also fetched. So, all these are fetched, we do not know whether we will be requiring it or not, but we have fetched it. Decoding is done in parallel with reading the register operand R s and R t and this is done within the processor right, because our instruction is in I r and from I r we are taking it one by one, possible because these fields are in fixed location in the instruction format. In a similar way the immediate data can be sign extended. So, the immediate data can be sign extended to make it 32 bit. So, this is what we are doing. In A, we are bringing R s, in B, we are bringing R t. Immediate data which is 0 to 15, we are sign extending it with the first bit that is R 15, 16 times we are concatenating. So, sign extend 16 bit immediate field here and immediate field, the next immediate field is padded with two zeros. So, this 26 bits are kept are taken from IR and this two bits are added. 
So, A, B, immediate and immediate 1 are temporary registers that are loaded in the instruction decoding phase with these particular values. Let us see what happens in execution phase. In the execution, the effective address computation is performed. So, in this step, the ALU is used to perform some calculation. The exact operation depends on the instruction that are already decoded. The ALU operates on operands that have been already made ready in the previous cycles. Now, the if it is already the data is present, we have already fetched uh, and kept it in particular A and B register uh, in the decoding phase and it is an ALU operation. Then finally, in the execute phase, the operation specified operation can be performed very easily. So, we show the micro operations corresponding to the type of instruction. Let us see this. Now, in execute phase, what can happen? If it is a load word, then this is an immediate value added with R 8. So, R 8 goes in A added with the immediate value that is 100, which goes in the output of ALU. Suppose, register to register, both A and B are present for this instruction R 5 and R 12 both are present, it will be added or subtracted whatever depending on the function and it will be stored in ALU out. Similarly, register and immediate. So, in this case R 5 is uh, subtracted with an immediate value. So, R 5 is available in A and this immediate value is available in IMM and this function that is subtraction can be performed and the output is available in ALU out. Now, for branch what happens? For the branch, the immediate value that we have got, it needs to be left shift twice and then added with NPC, because NPC contains the incremented value that will come to ALU out. And if we have a branch instruction like this, branch if equal to 0, that means if R 2 equal to 0, then only branch, then we have to check for this condition. And this condition will be A operation with 0. So, if this particular operation, if this condition is satisfied, this is a conditional branch, branch if equal to 0, if R 2 equals to 0, then only branch it. So, it will do some operation and it will set the condition and accordingly branch will takes place. Now, what happens in mem, memory access or branch completion? The only instructions that make use of this step are load and store and of course, branches. The load store instruction accesses the memory. So, the memory operation will actually happen here. The branch instruction updates PC depending upon the outcome of the branch condition. So, this also happens here. So, these are the two things that happens in mem phase. So, now NPC will be loaded in PC and for the load instruction, output of ALU location pointed by that will come to LMD, load memory data. Similarly, for storing the NPC will come to PC and then B, content of B will be put in to that particular location, which we have counted, that which we have already added and found it out, which is there in ALU out. And for the branch, what happens if the condition is satisfied, then that ALU out will go to PC, if the condition is satisfied and else NPC, which we have already calculated will be loaded to PC. This is how it happens. And for all other instruction, we have already calculated the PC value. 
now that P c value which is in N P c will be put in P c. Let us see in write backs what happens, register write back. In this step the result is written back into the register file, register may come from A loop, result may come from memory system via load as well. The position of the destination register in the instruction word depends on the instruction already known as known at the decoding phase. So, this is basically the destination register in this particular case and this is the re destination register in this particular case I type it. So, when this is the destination accordingly the position of the destination register we are already know it from the decoding phase and then the result may be put in there in this particular step. So, whatever value was there in ALU can be put it in for register transfer can be put it in that particular place. Here also RT ALU out will be put in RT and in load instruction in LMD we have stored that value, now it will go to the register, required register in the, this is the destination register and these cases this is the destination register where that value will go in. Let us see some example instruction, now we have seen step by step that how we can in MIPS how this uh, data path is and how the instructions are performed. Now let us see a complete execution of an instruction add R 2 comma R 5 comma R 10. So, in the instruction fetch phase I R will have mem of P C. So, this entire instruction is in I R and N P C will have P C plus 4. Similarly, A will have R S register R S, B will have register R T and in the execute phase both this source operands are added and it is available in ALU out. And then in the mem phase the NPC is loaded with, PC is loaded with NPC value for this particular instruction, for other instruction other things can also happen. And finally, the value of ALU out will be put into the destination register that is R2 here. So, this is in 5 steps we are executing it, but for all instruction all these steps will be required. Let us see how we can add an immediate value. So, in this case this is an immediate value. So, this immediate value the which is 16 bit is concatenated with the most significant bit value and we get the total 32 bit immediate value and A is R5 here. Finally, ALU out we will be adding this value with the immediate value and NPC is loaded in PC in this particular step and finally, we write back the output into R2 that is the destination register here. Now, for load instruction. So, for load instruction we can see that similarly in I R in instruction fetch these two steps will be performed. A will have the source operand that is R 6 here, immediate value will be stored in I M M, A L U out will add R 6 with 200 with the immediate value and it will be stored in A L U out and then N P C will be put in P C and memory operation is performed here. So, the output of ALU out from this particular memory location we need to read the value that is what we are doing memory operation of ALU and which is loaded in LMD. Now, LMD contains my value that should be put it in R 2. So, LMD contains my value that should be put it in the this particular register which is the destination register in this case reg RT. So, LMD will be stored back here 
Similarly, for storing, what we have to do? We fetch, we decode. After decoding, same way we are doing ALU, where we are adding this and this immediate value and this register value. NPC is loaded to PC. And now, instead of getting it from the memory, what we are doing? The value of B that is in R3 is stored in this mem of ALU out, because ALU out is the location. So, mem of ALU out will now have B. We are storing B into mem of ALU out and in write back there will be nothing for store. Let us see the next instruction branch if equal to 0. So, what we are doing here? So, in the instruction fetch and in the decode in the same way we are fetching it. In ALU out what we are doing? We are adding NPC with the immediate value which is left shifted twice and finally, we are putting that condition based on R 3, R 3 is loaded in A. If we are checking this condition, if R 3 equals to 0 or not, which is in A, A equals to equals to 0. Accordingly, this condition will be set. If it is 0, then only branch will takes place. So, otherwise N P C will be P C. So, if the condition is met, then A L U out will be put in P C else this n p c will be in p c and there will be nothing in the write back phase. So, this is how the branch instruction is executed in MIPS. So, we have come to end of lecture 21. So, in this particular lecture, we have seen that how the instructions are executed in MIPS, in MIPS architecture, how the data path is there in MIPS and how the instructions are executed. Thank you.